So quite a while back, probably over a year, perhaps even closer to two, I first came across uh, videos on YouTube showing how people had built essentially what is a giant magnifying glass uh, using this thing called a Fresnel lens, which were used in the, the old heavy big screen TVs back in the 90s and things. And so you can take these lenses out and build a frame for it and just make a very, very powerful uh, solar magnification lens you know which is fun for all kinds of reasons and people can even have melted glass and and burnt metal and things it's it's pretty astounding the kinds of uh, extreme temperatures you can get when you focus the sunlight through one of these fresnel lenses and so ever since i saw that i thought that would be a real fun project to do sometime if for no other reason than you know seeing if you can catch things on fire and having that kind of fun but really, as I thought about it, I was for a long time curious about what kinds of results and observations you could make using something that had the, the magnification, you know, the, the magnification capabilities of, of a Fresnel lens uh, with moonlight as opposed to sunlight. And then one day as I was coming home in my neighborhood, somebody had left a big old giant TV sitting on the, on the sidewalk for free, so I wheeled it home and it I actually sat in my garage for probably another six months before I even did anything with it. And then early this year, I finally got around to taking the thing apart and removing the Fresnel lens and, and then eventually building a frame for it, which is nothing fancy, of course, but I managed to at least make it so that it could you know, hold its position on, a, on the swivel and everything like that. And I just used the, the plastic frame that already existed from the TV rather than build my own because I, I ultimately concluded that uh, I probably wouldn't be able to create anything that was any more functional than what it was already in so I just stuck it in the frame. So for the past uh, several months I've been particularly waiting for the full moon to try and take it out which of course is a challenge because now that I'm living further north in a different climate, there's a lot more clouds on a regular basis. So there have been a few full moons that were just completely clouded over. But then uh, this past, uh, the strawberry moon, I guess it was, the June full moon, there was clear skies and I was able to go out there. It was about 1.30 in the morning and just start seeing if I could uh, get any noticeable results. Specifically, I guess, the question I'm most curious about is really super basic and that's what I think I, I like about this whole experiment idea. I guess the main purpose for sharing this is because I do think it is something worthwhile you know if you have the means and you have the interest I'm sure there's probably quite a few people out there who could easily build something like this and get their hands on a Fresnel lens. There's lots of people out there who already have them and of course it's really fun to to burn things with the sunlight but or you can even there's a lot of practical uses as well such as uh, you know a solar oven and things like that which is it's pretty it has a lot of possibilities but if you're watching this channel then you probably know why moonlight would be an interesting uh, 
thing to explore with such a uh, powerful lens. Because really, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple concept and a simple question in terms of the official explanation of sunlight and moonlight, and the moonlight is effectively no different in terms of what it is. The same photons or wave particle, you know, stuff. <laughs> wave particle stuff. The same light, it's sunlight, just being reflected off the moon. And so it is diminished. And even trying to find like an official figure for what percentage of how much energy, you know, whether it's visible light or, or heat or whatever, is a very difficult figure to even track down. And, and so far, the only figure I've been able to come across is what they say it's 12%. That moonlight is 12% of the intensity of, of the direct sunlight. And even that is a very obscure number to find. Most of the time, they just kind of answer the question, if you can even find the question, by just speaking very abstractly and just like, oh, it's, it's so minimal compared to sunlight that it's just kind of, you know, you'll never feel warmth or anything like that. Or, But nevertheless, <laughs> even 12% or even some tiny percent, even if it was less than that, it's hard to get around the honest question of, well, if you had enough moonlight and it's the same stuff, and you're able to concentrate it enough, then I, I, do, not, um, I do not see any reason why there is, it should not be quite feasible to somehow concentrate moonlight, to magnify moonlight, to increase the intensity, obviously, to where you actually would get a temperature increase, where you could see a rise in temperature. It's such a simple concept that even kids who go out and burn ants with a magnifying glass can understand this. You know, this is like fourth grade science level stuff. <laughs> or it seems like it should be. So I was out there at 1.30 in the morning and it was really hard. The, the other reason I did want to, I think, share this is because since I've built it and been playing around with it, in the sun and the moon and trying to just get familiar with how it works and, and kind of work out the bugs or whatever or even try and figure out what the best way to do these kinds of experiments like what is the best medium to try and test the, the concentrated light against because when you're just magnifying sunlight you're just you know burning wood and burning cardboard and and all that and then with this jar of water uh, you're able to get a very dramatic increase even when it was still kind of cloudy and it, it was like early in the day the sun wasn't even that intense and you can get a very uh, rapid temperature increase but the trick of course is that the focal point it's like the sweet spot of this magnifying lens is very precise and it's very it's very hard to find because of course every time you go out there and you're trying to angle the lens so that it's uh, is you know, perpendicular to the the incoming sunlight as best as possible, and then of course the the sun is constantly moving, or the moon is constantly moving. So I eventually put like rollers on the bottom of it so that I can kind of move it around, and then it's adjustable. But even when you find the sweet spot, it, it doesn't stay put for very long. So it is a little challenging, and so I'm sure there's other people out there with a lot more technical know-how than I have who would you know be able to probably. Uh, figure out ways to, to get more control, or specifically like a sight, because the um, the focal point is, it's you're able to kind of pinpoint it, but then, you know, every time you, you have to adjust things, you kind of lose it again, and it's literally like, if you're a centimeter too close or too far away, you're kind of not in the sweet spot, it's very tiny, but in that tiny, specific focal point, it's crazy intense, so that's the part that I'm trying to... Um, you know, fine-tune a little bit, and if you have any pointers or suggestions, that, that would be welcome too, so. So the bottom line is that um, after having, you know, a quote-unquote successful magnification session, I was out there for about half an hour with this jar of water. You know, looking back, I should have had like a control jar, you know, that just sat there and, and had them start at the same temperature, but the temperature dropped close to about 10 degrees in that half hour. And how much of that just had to do with the temperature decrease of the air, you know, in the middle of the night, or whatever else. All I do know is that thus far I've been completely unable to detect the slightest amount of temperature increase through moonlight. And like, how much moonlight would you, would you 
theoretically, according to what Moonlight supposedly is, how much of it would you have to concentrate in order to get, you know, just a generic thermal increase? I'm mean, just, even the way that the moonlight, the, the concentrated moonlight, the, the video footage just doesn't quite capture it. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's kind of eerie. It's kind of weird. It's like a weird white blue glow and um it doesn't feel cold it doesn't feel hot you it feels like nothing and that's what's interesting too is that even just putting your hand in the beam and you can move it back and forth and you can find that you know when you're using the sun and you put your the palm of your hand anywhere in that area you can feel the heat but especially if you you know if you've got it right in the the focal point you know you could just like melt your skin so you can definitely feel it. You know, you put your hand against the back of the lens and then move it towards the focal point and you can just feel the temperature increase. It's very noticeable, but with the moonlight, there's nothing. Like, no discernible, tangible anything. And interestingly enough, it's I think that's what's kind of the fascinating thing about it, is uh, the more I've thought about it and played around with these things, is um, it's weird because it's, it's, it's this whole question of, you know... <laughs> The tangibility of moonlight, I guess, rather than, because we all see it all the time. Everything we think we know about the moon and how it works and what it's made of, and you know, it's all it's all just information we've gotten through observation, like basically through watching screens, the light hitting our eyes, and then looking at the moon, and then we kind of combine the two, the things we've seen on TV and in books, and then you look up at the moon in the night sky, but. It's, it's kind of a crazy deal to be <laughs> standing out in your yard at 1.30 in the morning going, so, th so this is what I'm doing with my life right now. That's something I never would have imagined, but um, it's pretty fascinating, and it's, you know, at worst, it's just harmless fun, I guess. I mean, there's no, you know, if this is some kind of th threat to society, because you're curious about why can't we magnify moonlight if moonlight is just sunlight and we can magnify sunlight. Obviously, you're not going to get the same uh, temperature increases with sunlight, but, you know, it's gonna, it would have to be proportional. So it's really, this is just basic, basic science stuff, right? So, yeah, hopefully you guys, if you have one or you want to make one, um, yeah, go for it. If I can do it, you can do it. But anyway, yeah, the whole, <laughs> this whole weird thing about, like, I'm literally trying to concentrate moonlight into a jar. <laughs> I'm trying to put moonlight in a jar and see what happens. It sounds absurd on a certain level, but um, I'm so past caring at this point. So that's one thing I've been up to, and hopefully I'll keep trying to do more experiments and, you know, let me know if you have any suggestions or questions or whatever, and uh, you know, just about the, the whole broader question. What other things could we try to kind of along these same lines? But I like that it's a very simple and straightforward approach. You know, uh, taking the official explanations at face value and then saying, okay, well then, here's a simple thing that we should be able to to demonstrate and reproduce, and how do we do that? Is Has it ever been done? Has Moonlight ever been concentrated to produce a proportional magnification properties that sunlight does or you know or what because moonlight is a very difficult thing to test because it is so you know they just say oh it's it's sunlight but it's it's just so um, so minimal even though i mean you can't see it in the in the video but at 1 30 in the morning you know my there was a moon shadow you know the, the amount of light that would have to be reflecting off the moon in order to cast a, sh a shadow on, on the earth it would be phenomenal I mean, it would be so bright, and supposedly they're walking around on the surface of the moon, and, you know, why isn't the the, the intense moon <laughs> reflected sunlight bouncing off the, the gray dust rock of the moon and reflecting back up on the, the bottom side of the lander, and, the, you know, why, why would there be any shadows on the lander at all? It, that's ridiculous. But it, no, I'm not going to get off on that tangent, so... So that's something I've been up to. And it's been fun, but uh, yeah, I know it's it's still pretty uh, still pretty crude, but it's it's the uh, the idea I think is uh, interesting, and I wanted to share that. So thanks for watching, and God bless.